What's up everybody? I'm Tim from Timber Ridge Gifts. So this video is going to be all about wick bars. Uh, basically anything that can straighten or stabilize the wick to keep it in place during the cooling process. I've got some pretty cool examples to show you. So whether you're new to candle making or have been at it for quite a while, hopefully I'm going to be able to touch on something that you haven't seen before. So let's check out what I've got. Okay, so the first thing is just going to be the simple clothespin. Uh, these are fairly inexpensive, uh, cheap and disposable. I think you can get about 200 of them at the dollar store for 2 or $3. So it's a very cheap, economical way to uh, get started and they work great. Uh, basically, you've got your wick. You'll just put it over the top of it, cinch it a little bit tight, let it go, and it's going to hold for days. Okay, next up is going to be popsicle sticks or craft sticks, as they're officially called at the craft store. Uh, these are quite simple. You can basically just take and drill a hole in the center of them and um, use them like so to line up your wick. Uh, these are great because you can kind of configure them in any way. Um, the clothespin is not always going to fit every container. Uh, this should on a lot of your smaller containers. So these are a great thing to use as well. Fairly inexpensive. Get a pack about this size. I think there's 200 in here. I think these were $2.50 at Target. So again, another cheap, economical way that works great. Um, if for some reason you're not able to get these tight enough, you can actually combine the two. You can take your... Uh, popsicle stick and your clothespin, put them both together, and that's going to hold great. Okay, the popsicle sticks actually come in a jumbo size as well, which is great for the oversized containers that you're not going to be able to find a wick bar for. You're going to have to make your own, like I do with my one gallon candle and my two gallon candle. Nobody that's going to sell a, a wick bar that big that's going to fit that candle in the configuration that I need, so I have to make my own. So these are great. Again, you can kind of drill them in any configuration that you need to. Uh, you can kind of glue them together to fit any configuration that you need to. So whether you're doing just a slightly oversized that you're going to need two, you can just use one, drill a couple holes in it, line them up just right. That's going to work great for you. If you're doing, a, doing an even more off-size, this one's got three wicks. As you can see, you can basically just put them together in any, any configuration that you need to to build your own wick bar, and that's going to work great for you as well. Okay, so that was very briefly the uh, handmade or improvised ones. Um, those are just a few examples. Literally, you can use pretty much anything. I've seen people use everything from, uh, from hair clips to forks to glue sticks with tape on it. Really no wrong answer. If it works for you, great. Go with it. Let's check out some of the store-bought ones that are available. Okay, first up we have the uh, the bar clips. Uh, these are great. These are very inexpensive. Um, depending on where you buy them, you can buy them on off of, off of uh, Amazon or from candle suppliers. You can buy them in pretty much any uh, lock configuration anywhere from buying them individually. Lots of 12, uh, lots of 50. Plenty of different options that you can buy for. Uh, these are great too because they actually come in different sizes. I've seen anywhere from a uh, four inches all the way up to seven or eight inches. So depending on the size of your candle, this can work great for you as well. It's basically just a, uh, a piece of metal that's bent with a notch cut in it. All you'll do is just take your wick, slide it into that notch, give it a little bit of tension, and it's good to go. The only thing you need to be careful about these is these are mass produced. So the, the notch is basically just cut and then bent up. So the edges can be kind of sharp on it. So if you're not careful, That was not going to do it. Of course. <laughs> so if you're not careful and you pull it too tight, you can't actually cut your wick off. Then you're going to have to pop that out and re-wick that container. Uh, next up is the bow tie. Uh, these are great as well. These are a little bit more expensive than the bars. Uh, depending on where you buy them, they're going to cost you anywhere from 40 to 60, 70 cents a piece. Uh, the great thing about these is you can see the uh, the way they're shaped. They've got notches in them. Those are going to fit just about any round container. It's going to be a great way to straighten it and keep it in place. They've also got uh, uh, three holes in them. You've got the center hole and two offset holes. So you do have different options whether you're wicking a one wick or two wick candle. Okay, next you can buy plastic ones in this configuration. Uh, this one's fixed. It's for a three inch container. You can actually buy some that are adjustable. It'll be several pieces put together and you can slide them in and out. Uh, cool thing about these is they have the, uh, if you can see it, they have that notch built into it. 
So basically we're just going to find the right size container, slide our wick through, get it set on top of the jar, then we can actually loop our wick through that notch. And it's going to hold it in place just like that. Now, depending on where you buy those, those are going to run you about 25 to 30 cents a piece. You can buy them. And next one is next up is one designed specifically for mason jars. If you can see it, but it's actually round and notched on the bottom. It's going to fit perfectly on top of your mason jar. Uh, the cool thing about these is you can put them on top of your mason jar. You can go ahead and uh, attach the wick through the little notch in the middle, trim it off. After you pour your candle, you can actually go ahead and cap it. The lid to your mason jar will fit right over this wick bar. There we go, just like that. Uh, the cool thing about that, there's several benefits. Uh, for one, it's going to keep uh, debris and everything from actually falling into your candle while it's drying. Uh, maybe bugs flying around your lights or something. It's going to keep those out of there. Keep them from ruining your candle. Uh, another added benefit is it's going to cause your candle to, slew, to uh, cool just a little bit slower. That's actually what you want. That's going to help you reduce uh, a lot of the air bubbles that form, the frosting, the uh, rough tops. That'll help cut down on that. Another added benefit, I don't really have any way to confirm this. I've seen one of the uh, bigger candle companies talking about these. They say that it actually reduces uh, scent loss up to 20%. Um, maybe they have scientists in the lab that can uh, measure that and be able to give that exact number. I don't have any way to confirm that. I can say that I, I do agree with the logic of it at least. I have noticed in mind that they do seem to be a little bit stronger with me using those, so maybe it is holding in some more of the scent. But these are my new favorite when I'm making uh, mason jar candles, because I can just pop them on there, pop the lid, and forget about them. They're going to dry perfectly, even with no debris, and they seem to be smelling better. Uh, these are a little bit more expensive. A uh, pack of 12 is going to run you anywhere from $3.50 to $6, depending on where you buy it. But in my opinion, they're worth it. Uh, there's actually only a couple places I found that sell them as well. You can buy them on uh, eBay or Amazon. Uh, the only candle companies I found that uh, carry them are uh, Aztec Candle Supply and Bitter Creek Candle Supply. I'll put the link to their uh, websites in my description. If you guys want to check those out, feel free. <clears throat> but if you don't want to uh, spend the money on those because if you are making you know, three or four cases at a time, you're going to need 50 or 60 of those. Can get kind of expensive because they're the more expensive of the uh, of this the uh, store-bought wick bars. Let's show you how to make your own. Okay, so rather than spending money on that, I have just made my own. If you can see that well or not. There we go. Basically, all I've done is just take the, uh, the inner lid that comes with your uh, canning jars just drill the hole in the center of that that's going to be about the size of my wick. All we do is just slide the wick through. I've got the hole centered so that's going to keep the wick perfectly centered. And I can just take my clothespin, pull up a little bit of tension, clamp it down. It has the exact same effect as this with just a fraction of the cost. Okay, that's all the uh, wick bars that I had to show you. If, uh, if you use something different, feel free to add that in the comments.